Hello everyone, welcome into my craft space. I hope everyone is all well and uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to be a part of this junk journal tips, tricks, and hacks for 2023 collaboration from Rachel and Bella Crafts. A huge thank you to Rachel for inviting me once again to be part of this fun and exciting collaboration that has been going on all month. If you are following along with the collaboration, thank you so much for following everyone. Uh, there are some really amazing people here um, on the list of everyone that has been uh, creating and giving all of their tips, tricks, and hacks for the month. And we still have a few to go. The month is not over yet. Uh, if you are just joining us, maybe you just found the collaboration, uh, in the description box below, there will be a link tree link and you can click on that and join in the fun and watch everyone some really amazing um, tips and hacks that you can put into your saved list there's also a playlist on uh, Rachel and Bella crafts uh, YouTube channel as well so make sure you check all those things out so today I'm gonna be chatting with you about uh, tips and tricks for using eyelets with your junk journaling. Now, I absolutely love to use eyelets. It is one of my favorite metals to play with. And um, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I like to use while doing eyelets. And we will just have a great chat all about eyelets and I will show you some tips for using them and explain some of the tools and uh, the hardware that you'll need to get going. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first have a chat about what eyelets are and how they come. Uh, so these are metal eyelets, and you can see they come in a variety of shapes and colors. Typically, they come in just a few sizes. I've only ever personally seen three sizes, uh, but the tiniest ones that I've seen are very uncommon and very hard to work with, at least in my opinion. Uh, the typical way that they come are this larger size, which is called 3 sixteenths. And those are inches. I'm sorry, guys, if you are in metrics, I don't know what the conversion is, but I think it's in millimeters and centimeters. And um, usually it talks about uh, the size, I think the, the width of the metal or something. I don't know. I, um, these are inches. So this is an eighth inch eyelet. This is 3 sixteenths. So sometimes um, if you just say standard eyelet, people don't know what you're talking about. Um, but if you just say big or small, most people will know what you're talking about. So again, 3 sixteenths, an eighth inch, that'll get you by. And um, you don't have to know a lot about measuring to use eyelets. Uh, like I said, you can just say small or big. Sometimes uh, these bigger ones do come with a, a larger rim. Um, so these ones, like this here, so you can see they have a, a bigger ring around the top part there, that colored part. And those ones are called, um, let's see, they're just called a wide, a wide eyelet. And they're 3 sixteenths, ah, or 0.5 centimeters is 3 sixteenths. There we go. Okay. So again, they come in a, a, a huge assortment um, of colors and shapes and uh, just a couple sizes, but you can see here in my tub, they do come in a variety of shapes and, um, and they're just so much fun to add to your junk journals. Now, let me show you some different ways that you might use them now that we've talked about uh, what they are. Uh, one other piece that we should note when you're talking about an eyelet this is the top part here where the, the color and the shape is. Even if it's just a round shape, this is the top. Uh, this bottom piece here that kind of has this long, narrow, that's um, like the shaft of the eyelet, and that is your bottom side. So that is your back side. And then the colored portion is the top side. So that's important to note when you're actually trying to utilize them. Uh, and here I'll give you some different ways that I have used them so you can see, and then we'll get into the tips. Some of the most common ways that eyelets are used is on the spines to sew in your signatures. I like to use eyelets on the spines of my journals because the eyelets really reinforce the holes in your spine and uh, they just make it more colorful and fun. You can see here, uh, this one here is purple, so it is adding to the color and interest of the spine while providing reinforcement to those holes. I'm just starting this book here and you can see I've used, uh, let's see, there we go. You can see I've used some shaped 
eyelets, the little hearts. So this is going to be a baby book. And how cute is that? Just to add a little bit of decoration and interest to uh, the spine there. And again, it does reinforce those holes. So that is really, really great. Um, so this is a three hole pamphlet stitch on the spine of the junk journal. You can see I've used, what, three, six, nine, 12. I've got four signatures in this one. So I've got 12 eyelets right here. Uh, this other book that I did, I actually had 18 eyelets in the book before I even had any pages. <laughs> How is that even possible? Well, let me show you. Um, eyelets are so much fun and so addictive to add interest and um, fun things to your journal. So this, I just added it onto a page. It kind of made a little frame. And then I did some string art in between the eyelets here. Oops, let's see. So I just put the string in between and it made this fun little web. Uh, of which this big charm just kind of lays on in there. So that has what, four, eight, nine, 10, 11, that has 12. And then um, I had uh, six here on the spine to sew in the pages. So there's three at the top here and three at the bottom. You can see them underneath my charms there. So uh, that is another way to which you can uh, add them to your spine. I'm going to show you some interesting things about this for as far as the tools go that you need to uh, set your eyelets as well. So don't worry, we'll get into that. Uh, this is a really fun corset lace spine. So this one you have quite a few eyelets here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's zoom out just a bit so you can see the full effect. There we go. Um, so this one is laced, and so we have eight eyelets on either side of the spine lacing it together there. Then I also have an eyelet here, which would be for the closure once I'm ready to put that one on. You can see here on this book, I have used one of the wide eyelets around the rim of this tag. Um, again, I have it on the spine. I put them on almost every spine that I create because uh, I feel like it really reinforces those holes, adds some color and interest and all of the things. Um, they're also really great to use. Um, this is a tag idea book, so we have all kinds of tags over here. Uh, they're also great to use on the um, holes for your tags. Again, reinforces them, adds some color, adds some shape or some interest, and I just love them. Look at how they look as like a, a little tab here hanging off the, uh, the edge of your pages. So this is just a tag without the eyelets. And then there is a tag with the eyelets. So I feel like it really gives it a lot of support, uh, color, fun, shape, and interest. All right, so let's go ahead and you've seen some of the ways that I utilize um, eyelets and I'll continue to show you more ways that I use eyelets here as well. Uh, but let's get into some uh, tips and how to use them. On my Facebook page, Fraps and Scraps, I do what's called Tool Talk Tuesday. And every Tuesday we chat about different crafting tools uh, or sometimes it's techniques. Um, but very frequently I have chatted about the crocodiles and I even talked about the evolution of eyelet setting in one of my tool talks. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out, check it out. I'm trying to get them on YouTube, but um, I haven't been very successful. I'm sorry about that. I will do my best to get some more of those tool talks over here on YouTube as well. Uh, the evolution of the eyelet setter has been kind of funny. When it first started out, um, you use this little setting mallet thing and a hammer and you just hammered it out and it, and it was so loud and quite obnoxious and it was like really great for mad crafting. Um, not so great for nighttime crafting. Um, but it did have a lot of things um, like you could you could set an eyelet anywhere on a page and that was really great. Uh, then they came out with a silent setter and all of these other different things, these little prongy things that you can use, all kinds of crazy ways until uh, We Are Memory Keepers finally came out with what's called the Crocodile. This is the Crocodile. This is the Crocodile 2 or the Crocodile Big Bite. And uh, the biggest thing here is one, the design. This one you press because it has little legs here or little feet. This one you hold and so you squeeze. And then this one has a 12 inch reach. So your page, you can, that's how you can get all of the eyelets here in uh, the center of your spines if you're doing more than just the edge. So I personally like to use uh, the crocodile and I use both of these. Uh, they hang out here at my desk. I have a couple of them. Um, if you have one, it may have the black plastic pieces right here. They have updated that since these came out. Um, I personally love these metal pieces and wish they'd go back to them. Uh, but either way, it still works fine. And um, let me go ahead and show you 
how this works. So when you get your crocodile, it will um, it will come with instructions, and it's kind of important that you look at those instructions. If you've tossed them, that's okay. There is a way to get get the information back. Uh, but the dial portion of the crocodile um, actually shows you the best way to utilize these to set them. I will put it here if you want to put a screenshot. Um, I usually use setting A1 or C3. So the top portion of your crocodile has letters and this piece here actually spins. And so you'll use, um, if you're using the larger eyelets, you will use the 3 16 so the A setting and then one is for large eyelets or snap flare or 3 16 inch standard eyelets. So A1, if you're using the smaller ones, you'll dial this in here to C and then the bottom, or actually I'm holding it upside down, sorry. The top one here to C and then the bottom one here to three. Now, some people say, well, where are these letters and numbers? Well, the first tip here is, um, so you can see right here, there is a C. Hopefully you can see that and there's no glare. See, there's a C. So we wanna use um, C or if we're doing the larger eyelets, which I'm gonna do now, we wanna do A. So we're gonna type in A, not type in, we're gonna dial in um, A1. And these have little numbers here. Sometimes they're really hard to see. Um, I plan to have my husband use a paint pen on mine and try to bring those numbers out a little more visibly. Uh, so this has the numbers one through four on the bottom here and A through D at the top here. And some someone told me one time, mine is broken, it only has two. Well, it's not broken. These aren't supposed to all have the little prongs hanging out here. Uh, the ones with the prongs are for the eyelets and these ones are for things like snaps and grommets. Now, eyelets are not grommets. Uh, there are two different things. Sometimes people think eyelets and grommets are just the same thing and they're not. Grommets have these little prongs on the bottom. I kind of call them grumpy grommets. That's an easy way to remember because they are really pokey and eyelets are not. So let's use our supply tag here. Uh, this is my first tip, really. One of my, one of my first, <laughs> first tips. I don't know how many tips we're going to get through today. Um, but if you uh, are using these inventory tags that you can get at most of your supply stores, I usually pick mine up at thrift stores or uh, garage sales, secondhand, all of those things. We're going to go ahead and use a dark eyelet just for some good contrast so you can see easily. Um, this hole is actually bigger than 360. So your eyelet is going to try to fall through uh, just like this. And of course, it's not going to actually fall through right this minute. But when you go to set it, it's not going to be in there perfectly in the center because you can see. Whoop, yep, there it went. All right, it did fall out. <laughs> it does fall out. The hole here is too big. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. And, um, you know, some people might say, well, you don't need an eyelet because this has a hole reinforcer. You're correct. It does have a paper hole reinforcer around here. That's what this uh, secondary color is. So you could leave it like this if you want to. I still like to reinforce mine with metal. I love metals. I like playing with metals. I like adding metals to my junk journals. And uh, I just think it adds a really nice touch to our journals. So what I do in this case, if the hole is too big for the eyelet that I have, and that's the biggest eyelet that I have, here would be a good place if you had some of those wide eyelets. You could easily slip in some of the wide eyelets here, and that would just grab uh, the space and make it look just like this. Or if you don't have these wide eyelets, these wide eyelets are kind of hard to find, at least in my area. And um, what you can do is just use a small hole punch. Whoops, small hole punch. Let's see, let's use, I've got some scraps hanging out here. Great use of scraps. You can make some little hole punches. And I think this is a, um, gosh, what is it? It doesn't say what size punch it is, but I think it's super tiny. So there we go, just like this. Basically, you just need a hole punch that is bigger than um, the hole that you have here on your tag. So we're gonna go ahead and punch a hole. So your crocodile also has a hole punch. It has two of them. So this one is for the 3 16 and this one is for the eighth inch over here. 
And the Big Bite has that as well. I'll show you that in just a second. So I like to go ahead and put this in. Now, on the side here where you either have a black metal or you have this uh, little dial like this, this is a depth setter. So if you want to punch holes all at the same depth, you easily can do that as well. You can also just put it all the way back to the furthest setting and use it freestyle, kind of like we're going to do right now. There we go. We'll put this here and we'll just punch a hole kind of in the center-ish. So we've got our hole punched there. We'll put this right over here and then we'll put our eyelet. You want to make sure the thickness of this isn't terribly thick because we want our eyelet to be able to be poking through the back here like this so that when we set it, um, it can grab all the paper behind. Now, we want the top of our eyelet to be the colored portion or the shaped portion, and we want that shaft to be on the bottom side. Now, when we are going to set it, we're gonna take our crocodile and use this piece here. This is the A setting, so we're gonna use this prongy piece. That's gonna go through the top part or the pretty part, the part that we wanna see. We're gonna put it right through here, and then we're just going to clamp down gently you don't need to really cramp a whole bunch you don't want to break it you don't want to hear any clicking popping any of that it should just grab right around like this on the back and it should be nice and smooth um, that is kind of catching my finger just a little bit so you could hammer it down or you could cramp a little tighter um, I think it's fine a lot of times what I will do is just press it into um, my, my desk or my, my mat here and uh, it's fine so that is how you grab uh, your hole in a tag if it is too big for your eyelet. So that is uh, one tip that you can do for that. Okay, so we've seen how this crocodile works. Now, if you want to do a slipped spine or have your um, holes at the top, and the bottom of your junk journals, this first style of crocodile will work just great. Uh, what it will not do is reach in here in the center. It only has um, this much of a reach. So your paper can only go in this far. I hope that's making sense. It can only go in this far. So you can see from the edge of the paper, that's all we get. Now, if you want to get to the center of your journals where you're maybe you're doing a three hole pamphlet stitch, or if you want to do like uh, eyelets all along the edge here, just either for looks or whatever, um, you're going to need this bigger one so that you can get in there and uh, have that longer reach. So let's chat about how that one works. It also comes with an instruction sheet. And if you um, don't have that still, I'll put a copy of it up here somewhere. Um, I sometimes take a picture of it and share it with my friends because that's the kind thing to do. <laughs> it again has these little cool charts showing you the settings, but the settings are the same. Uh, the design of the crocodile is just a little bit different, but once you know how to operate one, you can pretty much figure out how to operate uh, the others. So, um, so this one is the big bite. Here is your selector piece at the top. So you're either going to be punching your uh, punching your holes, the eighth inch or three sixteenths, or setting your eyelet. And this selector just moves right along. Now they've had some issues with this selector piece recently. So if you've purchased one recently and it doesn't just glide like this, uh, take it back or contact We Are Memory Keepers. They're aware of the issue. They've They've found a new uh, manufacturer for this piece and they are fixing them. So if you have purchased one recently and this is this video is being done in 2023 um, and you're having struggles with it, contact We Are Memory Keepers and they will uh, instruct you what else to do. Okay, so you choose your selector. First, we wanna punch a hole. We're gonna punch an eighth inch hole. And if you can see here, when I squeeze this, this little piece is moving down. That's our hole punching piece. So that's where it's gonna punch the hole. And this part here is our depth selector. So you'll choose this if you if you want it to go. And sometimes I don't even pay attention to the numbers. Maybe I, maybe I put um, a little mark that I want it to punch. Maybe I want it to punch a hole like somewhere right here. So then what I'll do is I'll figure out where that hole is gonna punch right here. And I'll move this to the edge of the paper. Okay, so now it's gonna go into that same depth. And what the cool part about that is, is that we can punch a hole right here. 
and maybe we want one a couple ways through here in the center. It'll all be in the same line, provided you line it up here with the, the depth selector. So that's really cool. So we've got our holes and they're all in the straight row. And then if you want to set your eyelets, you need to first set your dials, uh, just like we did before. So if we're doing smaller eighth inch eyelets, we need to use um, selection C3. So we're gonna use this littler one, which is C. And then um, those numbers are at the bottom and they're in the corner here on this one. So that's number two. And that's number one, we're going the wrong way. That is number three. And then you wanna make sure you lock these in. That is another tip for using uh, your crocodile while you're trying to use your eyelids. If you have this only part of the way here and it can wiggle and move around, you're not gonna get a good setting of your eyelid. So make sure you really pop this in. See this space right here? That should lock in just like that. So you should hear that little click right there and it should be locked into place, shouldn't be wiggling around. Um, or anything like that. Okay, so then we're gonna move our top selector piece to eyelet. This sounds like a lot of steps, guys, but once you figure it out, it's super easy and so much fun. So it's worth learning and uh, worth worth doing the, the work for it because it's just so great. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four eyelets. All right. So where this is going to set, now that we move this to the eyelet selection, when you push this down, it's moving your two little uh, dial pieces here. I'll show you on the side, just like this. So again, you want this top piece to go through the pretty side, the rounded side of your eyelet. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put our eyelet, now this is the top because we have our, our nice pretty selections of our tag here. So we're gonna put it in just like this, the top. And then we're gonna to try to find that little piece that can go through the eyelet right here. Hopefully you can see that. And then we're just going to cramp down. Cramp, clamp, whatever you wanna call it. Press it down, <laughs> squeeze it down. All right, here we go. We're gonna squeeze it down. And this one, you might have to squeeze it just a little bit tighter. There we go. And you can see it made this beautiful little flower on the back. Sometimes they'll make a little flower. Sometimes it'll just be nice and round, just depends. Let's do a couple of more and we'll see how they look differently. Now, you don't want to stick that shaft piece um, up. You don't want to do it backwards uh, because it will get stuck and it'll be really frustrating. Could rip your paper um, and you don't, want to, you don't want to cause yourself extra frustration. It's supposed to be fun. Okay, so we've got our pretty side up. We're going to put that right through. Now I struggle a little bit more to see because I'm visually impaired, so don't mind me. There we go, we got it. And then squeeze. And you can see that one made it just round instead of this flower. Either way is acceptable. And um, you, you can, Press it a little harder if you want to. Uh, these are different, probably different brands of eyelets, I would guess. Sometimes the metal just separates and makes that little star shape or flower shape. Sometimes it just makes a round circle. All right, Got this one. Okay, so just like that. And then this one here. Another good tip if you are using your eyelets and you have set them and they're just not flattening out as much as you would like but you did already set them, you can run it through your die cutter just like you would an embossing folder and it'll help to flatten those pieces down. It'll just add some even pressure over your tag or your piece of ephemera. Obviously you can't do that for a spine <laughs> but you can also use a hammer and just kind of flatten them out. See these are, these ones are rounding and they are just raised a little bit. So I could put them back in there and um, add a little more pressure to these ones. This one I feel is pretty good and this one's really good. So either way, um, they are set and they are good. So we've got our eyelets in there. We've got them all in a row because we use this depth setter and we were able to reach way further out here. You can see if we use our uh, crocodile, just the crocodile, not the crocodile two or the big bite, we can only go in this far. 
So by using this bigger one, we're able to actually reach. Now you don't actually need both. Um, if you don't know which one you want, get this one because um, it will give you the reach and you can still do on the edge as well. Personally though, I feel like this one is a little easier for me to hold. It's my right hand man. I use it when I'm doing ephemera. I use it when I'm doing tags. I use it when I'm doing the slipped spine or I put my eyelets just here on the edge of the spine and it can reach. Anything it can reach, I usually will do uh, with this smaller one just because I like to squeeze it a little better rather than press it. Um, so it just kind of depends if you like this tabletop version or if you like this handheld version uh, but the tabletop version does also give you that 12 inch reach so you can get to the middle of your tags and the middle of your books uh, they do again use the same dial settings here so a1 and c3 those are the two sweet spots that you want for your eighth inch and your 3 16 eyelets so let's look at some ephemera that i have created and added some eyelets too just doing a quick flip through of this uh, botanicals book that I was working on. I haven't actually finished it yet. Kind of a shame because it's a beautiful book. Um, you can see that I used it up here for an eyelet here just for an accent on the top of this pocket. As we flip through, we will see more spots of eyelets here. They look really great on the edge of tabs. They also work really great in the center of tabs. But by putting it on the edge here, it allows you to put in a bulb pin or a safety pin or even a paper clip and hang a little charm there. You could also put a little jump ring provided that you put it close enough to the edge or you have a big enough jump ring that will reach all the way through. Those are some of my favorite ways to add uh, the eyelets. I don't think I have any in here. Let's see. Those are flat backs. Let's just flip through and see what we've got. Ah, yes, there's another one. So right at the top of the tag, that is one of the classic ways. That's a shaped eyelet. I love that one. Uh, that's one of the classic ways I love to use eyelets. You can see it's nice and set on the back. So when you run your finger over it, it's not getting poked or uh, hurt by the eyelet back there. And I think that's about all that I have in this book. Uh, let's see. This book here that I've got, this is using the Shades of Spring kit. I haven't done a flip through of this one yet, but it's such a fun and beautiful book. So I do have it uh, eyelets on the spine here. You just can't really see it very well. And this one is a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I have one, two, three eyelets in here uh, holding this center signature in place here. And then I have some brads in this one. I think I used a lot of brads in this one. Um, but I did use the three eyelets for the three hole pamphlet stitch in here. And then I have also recently been working on uh, the Letters of Love kit. And I'll show you some of the ephemera for this one. So I haven't decorated this one yet and I haven't even put the ephemera all the way in. But again, I did use the eyelets to reinforce the holes on the spine. And then I have had a great time making some altered playing cards and I did put an eyelet on a tab here. And I will put some more eyelets on the tags as well. So anywhere that you want to put a charm or a dangle or reinforce any holes or just make some fun decoration. As I showed you, those eyelets do come in lots of fun sizes and, or not sizes, shapes and colors. Um, if you're also doing a closure, this is a really great way to put one in. And then I decorated the, both sides of the spine here for uh, this book. And you can see it does show through on the inside there. Uh, let's see what else is in this one. This one is mostly just paper. I haven't decorated anything in here yet. But lots of fun ways to use eyelets. I hope this uh, video has helped you see that eyelets aren't as scary as <laughs> they sound. Um, they do they do add a lot of shape and color and they're just so, so much fun to use. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed some of these tips and tricks. Mostly the tips are honestly the hardest part is just learning your crocodile and the settings that you need uh, to get the best set eyelets here and knowing which tools do the job and how to set those dials. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We'll check out the rest of the collaborators. There is such a great group of 
creators here and we do still have a few more days after me so don't miss out on those ones and if you missed anybody in the back uh, of the, the first of the month all the way through now definitely go check them out and we are using the hashtag JJ tips tricks hacks 23 so you can type that hashtag anywhere there's a search um, a search bar and it will show you everything that comes up for this hashtag and if you are following along with any of the videos definitely type in this hashtag so we can see what you are creating if you enjoyed this video I would appreciate giving a thumbs up and a follow and I will see you guys in the next video thanks again for watching